Hello, everybody, and welcome to session one of Forbidden Lands, The Bitter Reach. We're kicking it off with all of these wonderful, beautiful people that we have here. We have an international cast here today. We have Europe, we've got Australia, we've got North America covered. We're coming to you from all over the world. So thank you for joining us. This is going to be an ongoing campaign here on the Free League channel. We're going to be doing this monthly, so we hope that you will join us uh, every time and uh go on this journey with us through the through the bitter reach which is pretty appropriate given given it's december and it's cold wherever you are possibly where i am i'm in canada it's cold it's snowy so i live in the bitter reach uh so this is uh i'm, I'm playing role play i'm running a role playing game in my in my backyard but um we're gonna go around we'll do some round table introductions here of our our beautiful wonderful players and we're gonna do some character introductions we're gonna talk about how they all tie together they've made their characters already we've done that pre-stream so you don't have to watch us read through books and kind of just like look down as we build our characters but we're gonna give you a little bit of background we're gonna do a little bit of session zero stuff and talk about what makes them tick and what makes this group tick for all of you folks and then we're gonna get into playing so let's Start things off to my left with Myri. Hello, Myri. Welcome. Hi, I'm Myri. I'm usually on Orkenspatter TV. We are a German Twitch and YouTube channel, and we've been doing news and stuff and actual plays for TTRPGs for 11 years now. And we've started playing the free league games a few years back. And Forbidden Lands is the one that is, I guess, the closest to our heart. And we've had several campaigns started, and then they always fell apart, as, as it happens. So I'm, I'm really, really hoping this one is going to run a lot longer than the other ones. But um, I'm, I really fell in love with the game and with the options I have. And I've returned to one of my favorite combinations for the game. So I'm going to play Karu. And Karu is a goblin rider. And as a goblin... Karu doesn't get a horse. Karu's got a wolf. And so yes. we've got this tiny person swaddled in furs on, on a big gray wolf and with lots of bags and knickknacks and stuff all over tied to the saddle. And that's, well, that's the little outrider and forager of the group, I guess. <laughs> that's right. A little goblin riding on a wolf. Nothing, nothing unusual here. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about Kairu? What is Kairu's pride? Kairu's pride is that when Kairu is together with a gray cat, which is the name of the wolf, because the wolf was raised by a lynx. Yes, <laughs> there's, there's a background <laughs> if, you, if you get the cards, the card set for the game um, of the animals that you can have as companions. And when Karu is with Grey Cat, they are faster than the wind. That's the pride. So anytime I, I really, really, really want to go fast, that is the pride I can call upon. But if I then stumble, I'm going to be really, really crushed. <laughs> it's very good. Uh, and what is your relationship with some of the other characters? Do you have bonds or ties with these folks outside of just kind of being a, a party, a adventuring party? Uh, I guess Karu mostly has a bond with the two wolfkin in our group because we've got two. We've got Aurora and Yunaye. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if I got the name right. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, that's good. Uh, but those two because uh, Karu actually doesn't like goblins or humans or dwarves or elves or half elves or orcs or anyone. But those those two, they are they are almost wolves. So Karu is, is kind of loves them silently with his little goblin heart. <laughs> Although I'm not sure, actually. We will find out what gender Karu is, if any, <laughs> at some point in the game. Yes, they're a, little, they're a little goblin heart. What is Karu's personal motivation for coming to Bitter Reach outside of the group's motivation? What drives him to come to this horrible, cold place? Karu needs to move, and Grey Cat does too, and they've been... As soon as the blood mist lifted, they've been running all over the Ravenlands and they've stuck their noses in every place. They got stung, then now they're kind of restless. So they're going north to find just more, more planes, more places to roam and to explore. So it's just that Karu just doesn't feel at home anywhere. They feel at home mostly when they can, when they can find new horizons and new places to go. And this is the newest place to go. Very good. Thank you, Myrie. I'm going to move over to my right now. It's always backwards on overlay. I got to get used to it with Michael, who's playing Aurora. Hello, Michael. Welcome. 
G'day. Um, yeah, well, uh, my name is Michael. Uh, I also go by the Dead Aussie Gamer. I am a professional role player and game master from Perth, Western Australia. And I will be playing the role of Aurora, or uh, as her code name, Frost, who is a Wolfkin rogue. Um, very, very excited to play this character because um, I, unlike many of the other people in this chat, have uh, not really experienced the cold or the snow or the bitter reaches as they were. Uh, in fact, I believe if I were to go outside right now, I'd probably get a tan. Uh, and it is currently 3 a.m. That's you know generally how, uh, how Australia works. So uh, I'm very excited to play in this completely fantastical world that will be akin to an alien planet for me. Yes, <laughs> yes. Do you want to trade places? I'll, you can come to Canada oh, man. and I'll go to Australia. You can experience. Now, see, the other side of it is I, I, I am a lizard, right? So for me, if I go to Canada, I would end up like just hiding in a rock until summer. <laughs> oh, that's what we do, anyways, in our homes. Those uh, are days of summer. <laughs> <laughs> All two days of them. Yeah. Can you tell us about Aurora's pride? Yes. So uh, Aurora has had to uh, grow up pretty much um, very independent, lone wolf style uh, for a great deal of uh, her um, her young life. So um, she had to steal. She had to kind of, you know, try to do what she could in order to survive, which made her very adept at evading capture. And so her pride is that no one can catch her. Or at least they can damn well try. <laughs> gotcha. What is uh, her relationship like with the others? Is there anyone that she has a special bond with? Um, well, she has a special bond with uh, Yone, uh, mostly because, again, they're both uh, wolfkin. She just has this instinctual um, kind of feeling as though uh, being with more wolfkin is the right thing to do kind of that pack mentality as it were right, um right. thinks quite fondly of karu as well um while of course um not really not really trusting of many people karu has always kind of proven uh themselves to be very reliable and you know very trustworthy um but um there's still lots of aurora that she doesn't share with others uh, primarily she, she prefers that people call her frost around people that, you know, they don't know. Um, and that's just kind of an extension of, of, of how she feels though. Um, Noel and Corin are, uh, of course, uh, valuable allies. She more trusts in their abilities more than trusts them on an emotional or, or personal level. Gotcha. And what is your or Aurora's personal motivation for coming to Bitter Reach? Uh, so Aurora doesn't actually have many blood relatives, bar one. Um, there is, of course, uh, one relative whom Aurora doesn't really speak much of, who she was separated from as a, a young uh, pup. Uh, she's kind of on a journey to try and find um, find her, her sibling. And it, it's been a long and arduous trek, and she's kind of gone to the usual kind of haunts and the places like the main cities and towns. So now she's kind of going to the expansion areas, to the to the areas that are being discovered and 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 the furthest reaches. So uh, in in just kind of thinking that maybe her sibling's done the same. Very good. Spoilers. You might you might see her sibling in another stream. What? On another what? No, what? I'm, I'm no spoilers. No spoilers. Just a hint. Maybe. <laughs> Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Uh, they both survive. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's right, true. Very good. Thank you, Michael. Uh, Millie, I'm going to move over to you. Can you tell us about Yane and uh, tell us about yourself and what you've got going on, what you do on the internet or Twitch and everything Ooh, else? Um, yeah, my name's Millie. Um, quite often, uh, I, I'm i Millie the GM, which is interesting because now I'm not the GM um, and it's going to kill me that I don't know all the secrets because I like <laughs> secrets. Um, I've also wrote quite a few Tales from the Loop, you might remember a couple of weeks ago, I played some Tales from the Loop on here, um, and you can find them up on the Free League Workshop, um, and there's more to come in 2021. Um, I, I'm going to play a wolfkin, um, an old scarred wolfkin, um, Yonaye. Um, she, yeah, she's 55, which I, I, I understand to be pushing it a bit for a wolfkin. Uh, and so she's she's going to do a little bit of of like wolf mama, um, which I think is slightly grumpy. 
Like I can't imagine Wolf Mum as a, a that huggy. Um, and so, so yeah, she's um, old, grey, scarred. She's got a bit of a limp, um, but she's still useful, I think. <laughs> the elder stateswoman yeah. of the group. I love it. Yeah. The matriarch. Maybe. Maybe. A bit. <laughs> Maybe. A bit. I. You know what? When I made characters in Brandon Lines, I always went old also. I don't know. I, I yeah. lean. I, I like, you know, you get less stats, but you get more of the good stuff. You get more talents. Yeah, more but, talents. Uh, that's what more I lean talents. towards. But what is, it's Yana Ye? Is that how I? Yana Ye. Yeah. I'm going to mispronounce Ye. things. You guys are going to learn this very it's often. Right. I mispronounce things I'll all the time. I'll mispronounce it. So don't take offense, please. <laughs> my character has three letters. I hope you can pronounce it. Yeah, <laughs> it's on brand. I have people always show up in my, in my streams. They're like, oh, Matt's mispronouncing things. That's what he does. So uh, yeah, just be prepared. It's uh, Don't take offense. It's just what I... It's just me. Uh, what What is Yanye's pride? Yeah, I'm still strong. I could survive in the wood, uh, the wilds for weeks. Yeah, so she's. Yeah, I'm still strong. No, no, I am. I'm still strong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I that's am. it. Yeah, uh, <laughs> aren't I? I think of probably. Course. Yeah. Um, what? So that's her pride. Okay. And what is your relationship like with the other characters? Um. It's, I guess it's probably a combination of if you wear that pack properly, it wouldn't, wouldn't make so much noise. Have you thought about picking up after yourself? Why don't you, why don't you put all those things in the bin because they're a waste of time, that kind of thing. Um, but also, also you should eat. Have you eaten? <laughs> Where did you, when did you look after that? Like, if you don't keep that, that sort of in Nick, oh, shit. that kind of thing, like <laughs> don't die yet. Don't let's not die today kind of thing i love that yeah <laughs> that's good uh what oh is uh her motivation for coming to the bitter reach um i suspect i think it's a lot of like like no i, I i'm still i'm still useful i'm old um i've, I've done done all these things but i'm still useful i can still learn new things um i'm i'm relevant still uh is her motivation <laughs> uh, very good very good all right ben can you tell us about your character and what you have going on outside of all of this hello um i'm ben i'm from garblad games we've been doing actual plays for a couple of years but we just started twitch streaming since lockdown began uh we've done a little bit on the channel with for matt um i'm doing coriolis in january mm -hmm. back here Woot. Um, but yeah, that's us. We're babies in the world of online streaming, I guess. And we do, just want to play with the big kids. <laughs> Don't we all? I'm going to be playing Corrin Hartseer, who is a half elf of sort of no fixed abode and not really entirely sure what his place in the world actually is. Uh, his pride is that he senses the unnatural before anyone else. So he's got this sort of spooky sixth sense thing going on, but it leads to him being a little bit unfocused and a little bit out there. He's got the master of the thousand yard stare. Yeah. Is he paying attention to what's going on or not? So a little bit scruffy, a little bit mad professor. He's quite young and really not sure of himself. Very good. And you're a half elf in a group of goblins, wolfkins, and orcs. <laughs> he's, he's the one with a pretty face. We're going to put him in front. He talks. <laughs> yes, yeah, you're the face character. He, uh, he feels like he doesn't really belong anywhere. And he's fascinated by these sort of liminal people, people on the fringes and the edges of society. So the, the wolfkin, they're between people and animal, and that's fascinating to him. So he's, he's really interested in them, not in a kind of poke them and study them kind of way, but in a their existence is more pure and natural than ours kind of way. Mm. What so he finds them particularly interesting. Ah. And he's just kind of floating along with this cohesive little group. Gotcha. So that's his relationship. He's just kind of finding his way, met up with them. Okay. What about, what about his personal motivation for coming to the Bitter Reach? He's looking for a place doesn't know what it is that he's looking for <laughs> but it's a place a barren and he might belong wasteland. there <laughs> somewhere somewhere that he can fit in and belong 
Very good. Yeah, well, who knows? You might find it here. Maybe maybe those the long extinct gone winter elves are here and they'll they'll welcome you in. Maybe. You never know. <laughs> Very good. All right, last but not least, Matt, welcome to the channel. Can you tell us about Null Red Hand and what you have going on? Sure. Um I'm Matt K. I am one of the hosts on Mud and Blood, a podcast all about dark and gritty role playing games, which has been going for about two and a half years now. Um, I also this year started a streaming channel um, called Three Skulls Tavern, which is dedicated to uh, Free League's games. Um, yeah, I love Free League's games. I've been playing since Mutant Year Zero came out. Um, actually, I should say running since Mutant Year Zero came out because I don't get a chance to, to play them that often. Um, yeah. Noel is an orc. I went for an orc because I have I've run Forbidden Lands many, many times, and I've never had a player play an orc before. So this is something a little bit different. Um, I'm going with the champion uh, profession, which is one of the um, which is the new profession in the Bitter Reach. And yeah, Noel is a young orc. I've picked someone who's 17 years old, which is pretty young, also for orc orc years. Um, I'm going to be playing him so that he is eager and boisterous and full of himself. And yeah, <laughs> it's going to feel a little bit like a, um, a beer and pretzels D and D character. I have a feeling, unfortunately, oh, well. oh, which is not something I'm really keen on, but, um, it's just kind of how it fell out. So <laughs> I, I was going to say, so you will be the first to die then. If you... <laughs> I will probably be the first to die. <laughs> You're going to play yeah. like that. All yeah. right. Pretty the good. first time I ran Forbidden Lands um, was when it was in beta, and it was a one shot, and we had a character die at the end of the one shot. So I'm aware of how of how uh, yeah lethal this game is. Yeah, combat can get a little rough. Uh, what's yeah. what's Noel's pride? Uh, my pride is that I stand where others fall, which is one of the ones given in the book. Um, yeah. And what's your relationship like with the the others in our group? Yeah. Um, I'm an orc, right? So nobody is kind of kin with me and I'm keeping my eye on them at the moment. However, I think most of them um, have something to offer as a group. I'm kind of the the meat shield, I guess. Um, so, you know, why do I want to keep these people alive? I've got various reasons for it, I guess. The only person I'm not too sure about I've written down is um, Michael's character, Frost. Um, I've heard the relationship is too clever by half. I need to keep my <laughs> eye on them. <laughs> um so yeah yeah i think mostly at this stage i'm trying to keep it a little bit open-ended i might change some of my relationships sure. that i've written down um depending on how things play out it'll so. change over time as well yeah but mostly and it's mostly neutral i think at this stage very good and what's your personal motivation for coming to the the reach i am of the urhur clan which means that um i am a vassal of emperor haraka um, so if anybody's familiar with the Raven's Purge campaign, you'll know what I'm talking about. But basically, um, yeah, I am off to the north to earn my scars, to earn a reputation, which is something that orcs, um, you know, value very highly. So I'm here basically to make a name for myself, to, to gain glory, to, yeah, to get scars. I'm very, very, very keen on getting scars. So um, bring those critical entry tables on. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Well, you come to the right place. I can't there, are, that. <laughs> there are a few orc clans that uh, that yeah. travel across the Bitter Reach, and they're probably what you're going to encounter the most when it comes to like humanoid um, humanoids in the Bitter Reach is orcs. So you've come to okay, the right place. Cool. That's for sure. That's actually one of my motivations. Is um, my emperor has instructed me to spread the news of his reign to any orc clans I come across. So that might be quite interesting. So you're a missionary. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm an envoy. I'm an, I'm an ambassador. Okay. He's not he's not really a holy character. He's he's just the, an, he's just the emperor. Gotcha. But we'll see. But I'm also 17. I could I, I'm really more interested in getting scars than spreading the the glory, you know, the news of the glorious reign gotcha. of Haraka. So you just we'll see how that pans out. Glory of the scars. So I asked all of you your pride, and your pride is going to change over the time because pride is also a mechanic in this game. Say you're in a really dire situation, things aren't looking good. If you can come up with a way that you can tie your pride into that situation, you can then like burn it, and you get to roll a d12 and add that to your roll. Say you failed to roll, and um, Matt, was what was yours again? We'll use yours as an example. I stand where others fall. So if you watch. Maybe a party member is about to go down or die. You can say, I want to trigger my pride. And all of a sudden, Matt's character will jump in there. He gets to roll an extra die and take over. Uh, that means he's burned his pride. You'll gain a new pride 
from that situation and going forward. So there's a mechanic tied to your pride and it will change over your time as your characters uh, also change and evolve. So as a group now, uh, we now know who our party is, what their motivations are, why they're here. As a whole group, why are you, why did you decide to come Bitter Reach? Um, for the most part, most people come here for treasure. This is a, a, a barren, cold wasteland. There are ancient elven treasures that are constantly being covered every day. This is why most people come to the Bitter Reach. Is this what has driven you to come to this horrible, horrible place? No, no glory. Yeah, no guts, no glory. I can't go out forgotten. Be the wolfkin that found all this cool stuff hidden under the frost. Forgotten. Uh, I helped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, de definitely. Um, I think for uh, for frost, it's it's leaning a little bit towards uh, many eyes when searching for for my relative. And you know, if I can make a few extra coin along the way, then you know, all the better for it. And, um, you know, uh, we've got the greatest people to survive with. We have a druid. We have a uh, literal wall of meat. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, if I need to run, if we need to run away, we've got uh, two very, very excellent uh, wolf themed track, uh, you know, tracksmen, pathfinders, you know, so. Um, a really slow old wolfkin who'll get eaten. <laughs> no, first. you'll be fine. You'll be, you'll, you'll be fine. Don't, don't worry about it. It's we'll, we'll put you, we'll carry you. <laughs> put me at the back. <laughs> <laughs> all right well very good shall we start playing now that we have all of our little session zero world building character stuff out of the way sound good yeah all right yeah, yeah. all right so let's get into it so we're gonna start you're on a boat you're on a boat you're on your way to the bitter reach you have to the only way well there's a couple ways to get here the most common way is by boat uh you have to find a captain who has a weather stone and that basically gets them through the ice, through the snow, and brings you up north. And there's one big city in the north um, by the name of Northfall. And that's basically where everybody lands who comes here looking for glory, treasure, to make a name for themselves. So you've you've secured passage on a ship that happens to have a weather stone to get you to the Bitter Reach, to, to, to meet your goals. The journey took longer than expected, but you're finally here. It's cold. It's colder than you expected. You had thought that the clothes you purchased in preparation were going to keep you warm, but you've never, never, ever felt cold like this. The first thing you notice as you approach North Fall are two large structures on either side of the docks. To your right appears an ancient lighthouse covered in engravings, depicting all sorts of things like warships and armies all over the side. To your left, there is ancient ruins reaching up into the sky from the time of the Winter Elves. Looks like nobody's really using them and they haven't been touched much, but this is the first thing you notice as you go into port. The ship makes its way into port and docks. The captain of the ship, he approaches all the passengers as they're departing, and he goes, Watch your step, tenderfoots. What you see before you is Northfall, a backwater populated by scum and bandits. But it's still the beaten heart of the bitter reach. This is where you find warmth and friends, because outside Northfall, everything is worse than you can imagine. What do you do now, huh? Hunt pike beast? Gather silver eggs from the wattle birds? Mine the elves' riches from the dirt? Well, one thing's for sure. Your noblest parts will freeze like they've never frozen before. <laughs> As you guys are coming off the ship, he's leaving behind you, and he calls out one last time. Hey, if you're looking for a place to start, go to Augur and the Tailor. Make sure you get yourself some proper garments so you don't freeze to death their very first night. You can find lodgings at Cuss and Dang if you can stand their company. Worm be with you. And he lets out a deep laugh. <laughs> As you come off the ship. So I feel a little bit like we should not necessarily have let that man sail this vessel. Well, we're here. It, it worked out, but he was asking a lot of questions, and he didn't wait for us to answer. <laughs> Let's get off. He just laughs. He's laughing as you're walking away. He knows your fate. He's seen many adventurers like you before. He takes their money, he brings them here, they die. He knows. He knows how things go. I'm about... Seven feet tall, so when I walk past him, I'm gonna just give him the you know the old nudge. Sure, yeah, yeah, Check yeah. Him. 
on the hopes that he's going to try to fight me, obviously. Ah, he just gives you a dirty look. He says, you'll be dead within a week. <laughs> come on, Grey Kid. Come, 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 come. So I've shared a map with you. So you're docked down at the very south there between 12 and 13. Those were the two things I described. 12 is the lighthouse. Mm -hmm. 13 are the ruins. So you're in the docks there. And you're greeted with merchants and boats everywhere. It's just a hustle and bustle. There's, it looks like there's a lot of fishermen or whalers down in this area. And there's also merchants who capitalize on those newcomers coming to the Bitter Reach to try and take their money away from them as they get off the boat and they're hit by how bitterly cold it actually is here, uh, not realizing how terrible this place is. Uh, in front of you also, number nine on the map there, you see these big stone steps that have been carved into the cliff. And up above on that cliff is actually the city of Norfolk. Down mm -hmm. here is just the docks. But there are people everywhere, heavily populated, hustling and bustling all about. Um, for the wolfkin, who are obviously covered in fur and stuff like that, how cold uh, is the weather here? It is still biting through to your fur. You've kind of got like a, a, a lighter pelt from being uh, in, in better conditions. So you're not quite acclimatized here just yet. Well, there is one thing he said that I think does burn true. We should find ourselves some better and more appropriate attire. Hmm. Yeah. That's gonna cost money, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, I believe so. They'll, they'll but... gesture around and be like, you can't hunt in here. They won't like it. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I know, I know, I know. No, no okay, hunting. Fine. Where? Where? So... You buying, little wolf? What? No. Well, for me. No. <laughs> it's not... I can't... I, you're not going to make me, right? You're not a wolf. I was talking to you that know how hard I am? <laughs> <laughs> a little. Uh, uh, you so... touch your tongue. Let's go. Uh, I'll lean down to, um, to Karu. She is right. There is not hunting, at least not in the traditional sense, but there is always prey to be found where you look. Uh, I'm going to start scouting around the docks, see if sure. there's an easy mark also leaving the ship. Uh, someone with, you know, maybe a, a wallet or a coin purse that's hanging a little loose on their, uh, on their uh, hip. So it begins. We are not good oh, people. We're not, we, we are terrible people. Hey, hey, hey. No, <laughs> no, no. Yeah. Um... I never claimed to be. <laughs> asleep. You're asleep. Go ahead. It is and very, make... very cold. Make me a. Uh, let's do a scouting roll for this, as you kind of look around the area, and you, you guys are walking around, and people are paying no attention to you. Like they've seen so many, like you, come here, looking for for riches. All right, scouting. So I get a plus one to my scouting. Because I have a sixth sense. Um, does would this include that if I'm trying to ambush someone? Sixth sense, uh, or, on, or only when I'm being ambushed? This one is for sorry, as I learn all your characters and character sheets. So sixth sense is my scouting is modified by plus one when an enemy tries to ambush you or perform a sneak attack. Uh, I'm just asking if I'm trying to ambush someone else, would that also kind of apply if I'm? No, no, not in this situation. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, already we're mugging the boat. Locals. That's right. Uh, so you did not get any successes. If you want to, you can push that roll and try and get a success and possibly your first uh, willpower point. Um... You know what? Sure. Let's try Let's try pushing it and see what happens there. So on the top uh, of your character sheet there, just hit the push button. Huh. All, All right. right. Success. Well. One success and one one. So you gain a willpower point. You're also going to take a uh, point of damage to the attached attribute, which is your wits. So go yep. ahead and minus your wits by one for now. Yep. And uh, so you're looking around, and at first, like, people are walking into you. They're kind of bumping into you. 
uh, the local fishermen and such, and people are shouting at you. They're trying to get your attention to buy some dried goods, some some fuel uh, starting pucks. You see people are selling pucks. They're these brown things that they're selling, and you, right away you're like, oh, that's that's frozen shit they're selling. But uh, there's one thing about the, about the the frozen earth. There's not a lot of wood here, so people use what they can to to um, to start fires out here. But you notice that there is one greenhorn who's just come off the ship and. They're taken in by the sights and the sounds, and they wander over to a merchant. And they got a big fat coin purse on them, and they're they're getting ready to start buying things. Uh, they're being pulled this way and that by various merchants, uh, and they are not paying attention whatsoever. And uh, you do see that they have. You could uh, possibly um, lift this coin purse, maybe talk them out of some coin. I don't know, maybe maybe tell oh, a little uh, lie, I... but but you do see so... an easy mark. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk um, parallel to. Uh, this this individual. I'm gonna wait for them to find something of interest, um, like either a store or someone you know selling goods. And as I do so, I want to sort of very quickly walk past while drawing my blade and running the edge along the just the yeah. top of the the coin purse. So sure. I'm actually just cutting it off at the at the rope. Okay, I like it. I like it. <laughs> yes, I like. We are already robbing people the first chance we can get. Person. Person. Robbing person. person. Thank you. I'm, I'm you don't gonna... expect this to be an urban campaign, right? So we got to make the most of it while this, we're in the this city. Tr <laughs> like, this exactly. is true. Honestly, <laughs> uh, this is the only, like, quote-unquote true city you're going to encounter. When you guys get onto the map, and that's a big part of this game is the hex crawl, this is mm -hmm. the only city in the Bitter Reach. Um, so you're not going to have a lot of opportunities to do things like this outside of Northfall. Go ahead and let's do Sleight of Hand. But I'm going to give you a, a bonus of one based off your success on the last roll. So mm -hmm. you just hit the sleight of hand button, and for bonus, you just plug a one in there. And make it a little bit easier. Oh, my God. Do you want to push that? <laughs> you know what? You've got no Why ones. You've got no sixes on this. This is like the best case scenario to push. That's true. Let's push it. All right. Oh, my God. <laughs> Welcome to Forbidden Lands. All right, take a point off of your agility for the the one yep. that you did roll, but you did succeed. You did succeed at it. Yep. So, as he's being pulled to a merchant, someone's hollering over to come buy some some dried out fish, and he turns to do so. And as he turns to walk away from you, so you're going side by side with him. You just slide your knife ever so slightly. You hold your hand underneath, and the purse falls out into your hand. And uh, he has he's completely unaware that you have you have relieved him. Of his of his coins, and the rest of you are watching this. You you see, you see. Are Aurora. we supposed to bring money? <laughs> <laughs> I I think we don't need to. I hope not. I didn't bring money. Oh, you did? No, I didn't either. Uh, how much coin is in the purse? You find there is two gold and two silver. Wow. This person actually had some decent coinage on them. Not that it's uh, going to do you any good once you leave Northfall, but... Uh, uh, so I'll walk, uh, I'll walk back to the uh, to the group with coin purse in hand and uh, start basically just rolling uh, the gold coin between my fingers um, <laughs> and look down at, uh, at Karu and say, um, as we said, pray, let's go get us some clothes. And I will distribute the gold. Uh, are they real? I'll hand, I'll hand the gold coin down to my goblin friend. Yep, yeah, they're real. <laughs> <laughs> Booth falls out. <laughs> um, I'll, uh, yeah, so we'll, we're going to go to the uh, a tailor of some, some sure. descript and get uh, some winter clothes. Augur and the tailor. For sure, mm -hmm. so you ascend up the big staircase that's been carved into the cliffside here and there's people everywhere coming and going up and down um as you get to the top one thing that really sticks out to you is there is a giant three-story mansion over to your right that's number three on the map and it is made of wood and stone whereas almost everything else here is made of stone or bones or snow blocks uh that they've the ice blocks that they've constructed so this one big house over there 
just screams of like wealth and decadence being that it is made out of wood and nothing else here is because it is such a precious commodity mm. but you I think you actually did that person a favor I get the sense that if they'd spent that money they'd have spent it down by the docks they'd be going out into the snow covered in whale oil and wearing sailcloth and it wouldn't do them any good. No, they yeah. can't spend the money anywhere and they won't go out into the wilds. You've saved a life. You saved look, a life. They look too weak anyway. They need to strengthen up. True. Also, they can't be that sharp if if, if uh, Frost can just walk up to them and nick. You know? <laughs> well, okay. you all flatter me, but... Uh, do not, uh, do not kid yourselves. We are only a short step away from being a victim as well. The Bitter Reach, from what I understand, is a very inhospitable place, so we should stay equally as sharp. I check my wallet. <laughs> <laughs> you quickly turn around, check your wallet. It is okay, it's safe. No one has okay. <laughs> nicked your coins. <laughs> Wait, are we supposed to bring a wallet? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm going to keep Frost's hand. Yeah, I think, like, at this point, it's like, do I have rope? Can I tie it around their waist so they don't wander away? Uh, if, Get a bell. Yeah, like, I know humans lead puppies and dogs and, and stuff with with leads. Can we do that with half-elves? Is that inappropriate? Like, <laughs> Tie a half-elf to your purse? <laughs> yeah. It's fine. I, I know where you are. Okay. Fine. Don't don't wander off, friend. Stay close, <laughs> and I'll make sure they're in front of me at all times, <laughs> like you know, shepherding them. Right. Shepherding them along. Right. Yeah. I'm just looking out. As you make your way through the streets, you notice that there is there is all sorts of kin here in North Ball. Because it is like the one the one bastion, the one city here on the frontier, uh, a mm -hmm. lot of these kin have put aside their differences and they just kind of struggle to survive or to make coin off of the uh, poor suckers like you who come here to try and find riches. So you, you're walking through the streets and you encounter other o orcs, I was going to say ogres, uh, orcs and goblins and wolfkin and humans and dwarves and... Uh, Elves. Well, there's not so many elves here, we'll say, but uh, you do see that there are um, folks of every kin here, and they're all kind of living in an uneasy um, alliance where nobody's really attacking one another. Uh, What's the weirdest and most unnatural thing around here? What what doesn't feel right? Because I'm getting a kind of this is a very pastoral, low fantasy, gritty, dirty kind of town, and I just want to sort of sense if there's anything more. You is are... there like manifest destiny here? Well, you do get some kind of like. Let's see. Let's do a roll here, and let's see uh, if you can pick up on some stuff. That's a. It's a good. Uh... Why don't you do lore for me, please? I could try lore. Okay, you're good. Even those ones don't mean anything. You can push it if you want, but you passed. You don't have to. You don't have to hurt yourself if you don't want to. Uh, oh, I'll let that stand. You uh, just kind of walk around, and this place is ancient. It's old. This was built centuries ago by the by the frost elves you've heard, uh, who have long since disappeared. But you get a really eerie sense off of that lighthouse. Something is is not right there, or something ancient or unnatural just kind of emanates from that lighthouse. Uh, but otherwise, the the town itself seems very orderly um and you're not picking up anything else out, out, out of the ordinary it's pretty weird so it's a it's a boom that town everybody's here off. just to kind of make their their riches can i seek out an orc or a group of orcs nearby? sure as you're walking through the streets i'm gonna say it's not gonna be hard to to encounter some orcs uh, you, you're walking and <clears throat> standing outside of a, a building you encounter two orcs or there and they're arguing amongst once another about something or other in orcish all right i'm gonna walk up to them and just stand really close <laughs> so they notice me uh sure you you walk up to them and they're in the middle of a heated debate about uh how one of these local shop owners is ripping them off and they should go back and slit his throat in the middle of the night and all of a sudden they stop and they turn around and they look at you and they're like what do you want 
What are you doing here with all these humans and elves? What does it matter to you? You're one of my kin. You have, Don't you... Are you wearing a helmet right now, or...? I'll, I get when I stood up to them. I, I'm wearing my helmet, but I'll pull my um, my face my face okay, mask. Okay, gotcha. So yeah, coronavirus yeah. As accessories. <laughs> you pull your face. Yeah, mask I'll pull my face mask sure. down. I'm a young orc, so I don't have the tusks yet. Okay, but um, they, they should be able to tell at least from the bottom half of my my yes. face that I'm orcish. I'm an orc. Gotcha. Yeah, I thought you were wearing your full face mask. I'm like, what's your problem, pal? Get lost. <laughs> uh yeah, they see you and they kind of like, what clan are you? Urhur clan. Urhur. And then it's gonna, it's gonna, something in my head is gonna tick. Uh, have you heard of Emperor Haraka? No, <laughs> we are of the Wolf Howl clan. We we are not familiar with your type to the south. Your soft type. Did you say soft? <laughs> they just look at you. Like, Did I stutter? <laughs> <laughs> Um, no oh shit, do I want to get my first star? <laughs> You're gonna start some trouble. Hey, you can! You're gonna start some trouble here. Um, Couple of orcs, randomly. <laughs> some of the Wolf Howl clan. <sighs> one of the three clans found here in I'm, the Bitter yeah. Reach. You know what, fuck it, right? I'm. Orcs are all about fighting and sure. um, fighting each other and, you know, being the biggest shithead on the block. So I'm gonna headbutt the one who just said that to me. <laughs> With my helmet on. He's, does he have a helmet on? Uh, no, he's not wearing a helmet. Oh, good. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so, go ahead and make me your attack roll, please. He's not expecting it. Yeah. Okay. Let's figure out um, Foundry very quickly. Sure. Yeah. Melee. Oh, right, straight up melee roll, yeah? Straight up melee roll, please. He's been... In this city, like five minutes, and we've already and our... someone. And <laughs> now buddy. someone is starting a fight. Hey, it is a frontier town. It's, they're they're kind of known for that, aren't they? Uh, yeah. Sure. Uh, where, one, where are we? In one success. Oh, sorry, where are we in relation to the map? Um, no, to them. To them. I'm gonna say oh, to me. Uh, mm -hmm. he, yeah. I'm gonna say that Null spotted these orcs, didn't say anything to the rest of you, and just kind of. Yeah bed up his pace and got a, a just a ways ahead of you and just you're, you're now standing back 10 15 feet watching him engage with these orcs not sure what's going on uh we're gonna say he probably didn't encounter too many other orcs uh before coming here so you're all just standing there 10 to 15 feet away watching and all of a sudden he just rears back and headbutts the other orc uh in the in the face of... uh, i'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna immediately stop browsing the wares of a nearby shop like mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm going to push my roll as well, I think. Oh, okay. I've got, I've got um, one skull showing, but I'm, I want more than one six, so I want to yeah. just be sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, so two. Two damage to your strength. It's all right. right two willpower. So You're yeah. yeah. And still one point of damage, though. Yep. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I think he's doing something dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know many orc groups. Is that... Is that... Greeting? Is that normal? Like, I'll look. Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 isn't... Let's watch if he hits him back. Okay. I'm still looking behind me, trying to catch a glimpse of that lighthouse again. <laughs> <laughs> if, like, a full blown, like, fisticuff starts, we'll head over. But if it's just, like, this is orcs, I'll let them play. You know, like, on the playground, like, you've got to let kids sort this stuff out, right? You've got to yeah, let them... yeah. If, if if you've got young pups, they can get rowdy. And yeah, yeah. And, but yeah. Maybe I don't know. Um, so, if we had popcorn, we could eat it. <laughs> <laughs> I returned from a food vendor with like some like steaming hot kebabs or something. Yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> give me, give me, give me. <laughs> yep. it's a bit, All right. It's a, it's a bit too cooked. I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, I think. This orc just grins, he wipes the blood from under his nose, and he rears back with his fist, and he gets ready to swing at you. Oh, okay. Um, hold, hold my kebab, and I will run over. <laughs> like, I'll, I'll run over and, and be like, oh, pushing on, pushing uh, on you. Like, no, no, he's young. We've just got here. This is, this is not the scar you want. This, this is an easy scar, because... 
you're doing it the wrong way. This is not a battle. This this is just an argument. And like, oh, yeah. And, and <laughs> like, uh, trying to defuse the whole sort of, now you're going to get sure. pasted by everybody in town. Yeah. You even got out of the gates. Why don't you go ahead and make me a manipulation roll? To try and convince these orcs not to punch Noel back in the face and beat him up for everything he has on him and leave him naked in the snow. <laughs> Good luck. Grim, you want a kebab too? Would you like to push that? All right. Um, All right. Hello. Sure. Yeah. 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 There you go. What is it? <laughs> that's that's not. Oh, good, there's right? a fight. Yes. Uh, that is not good. So go. Ahead. <laughs> that is not good. It, it appears as though. Give yourself a the orcs point. are asserting dominance. <laughs> so but why is Yanaya fighting them? Um, I think <laughs> she's trying to stop them from fighting. I don't think she's very good at it. So. No, that's <laughs> because too empathy. <laughs> I'm that, the that worst person she, to be doing this. You, you stop orcs from fighting? No, she, she's trying to assert wolfkin dominance. Oh. Shouldn't hmm. she be humping his leg then? <laughs> Or <laughs> peeing on them. Yeah, <clears throat> that's what a great cat does. All right, so you're all sitting back eating some kebabs. <laughs> <laughs> and Yanni walks up there, trying to calm the situation down, and they just kind of push her aside. <laughs> it looks like they're going back to Null, like, out of the way, wolf, kin. We got business to fix here. Uh, and they're going to try and take a swing. Uh at Null. Go ahead, did I hear uh, someone they... want to jump in? Uh, okay, so did they, um, so when, um, when Yona, uh, when Yona Ye, uh, sort of started talking to them, did they stop for a little while? They did. Like, just to... They were kind of stuck, um, like, what, like, what are you doing? Like, get out of our way, we're gonna beat the snot out of this guy. So, yes, they were, <laughs> they did stop. I'm, um, Moment I'm here. hearing the sound of a, um, of a horse nearby. Okay. Yes, yes, definitely. There are horses here. Big, shaggy horses. There's, there's reindeer, there's horses, there's wolves, there are boars. Hell, there's even the occasional polar bear that you're seeing people are using as beasts of burden. Yes. Uh, all right. Um, what I would like to do is very surreptitiously um, find a nearby wild animal. I mean, the bigger, the louder, the nastier, the better. Um, and while um, Yonaye is is having that conversation, sort of basically get ready to cut one loose and send it wild, just to kind of create a distraction. So does that mean we want to go polar bear? The town down. You... Uh, well, yeah, there's a polar bear nearby. Yeah, but I mean, if you know, if the polar bear is like pulling a, a garrison's armory cart, you know, yeah, I think I'll leave that one alone. But you know, yeah, if there's a you know if there's a polar bear a available, polar bear? sure. It's got sure, a sure. It's it's uh it's got a cart behind it, but it looks like it's carrying furs. Oh, I'll take go some of those furs too. Go for the mammoth. Oh, don't give me ideas. Don't give me ideas. Hang on. Have a um, mammoth riot through town. Yep. All right. Uh, and and sure enough, I'm going to um cut the harness on the polar bear, and uh, <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to smack it in the ass. <laughs> yes. Uh, and, uh, and run straight towards the orcs. <laughs> All right. I like it. <laughs> it's a good start. Uh, <laughs> yeah, let's, let's hold do my, it. So, and, I, and I look over at, um, the goblin and say, hold my kebab. <laughs> <laughs> and then I go off to do this. So go, go ahead and just make me a straight <laughs> melee roll. That's fine. You don't need to be sneaky or anything about it. I don't think you are. You're just walking over, just cutting it. Um, all right. Yeah, that was a dagger roll. Well, I mean, but this is my did. melee. You're good. You're good. Yeah, yeah, dagger. Um, you do, you slip on over, you cut the, uh, the ties on the, uh, on the cart, and you smack the polar bear as hard as you can in the ass, and it lets it roar, and it just starts charging forward as you do so. The cart comes loose, it kind of falls down, a bunch of the furs fall off. The guy who's leading it, the merchant who's leading it, is, Oh, no, 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 come back, come back! And then his goods are falling onto the streets. People are running over, they're kind of grabbing things as they can. He's chasing after a polar bear, and there's just kind of... nudge general... Karu and go, 
It's a polar bear. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so, so uh, as, uh, when I when I went to smack it, as I said, I wanted to kind of grab one of the furs. What I want to do is I want I want the polar bear to notice me and notice the fur. So I'm gonna kind of hold it behind okay. me, so it starts chasing me. Oh, got you. Almost like a matador with the. Uh... <laughs> Kind of, but from behind. And then what I want to do is I want to run past the orcs, and I want to basically put the fur ah, on the orcs gotcha. as I... Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, so you do, so you smack it, and you, you get its attention. Its eyes are wide with rage, and you're kind of in front of it. it. You get its attention, and you run with this fur on your back. And as you go past the orcs, and Yanaye, and Null, you toss this fur in the direction of the orcs. Do you say like run or anything to them as you yeah, run? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I looked at all and I uh, and I I, I I I basically I won't say anything. Uh, there'll just be this look and this moment that'll kind of slow mo as he sort of as I run past, going. <laughs> <laughs> and then that, that to me means kill them both. <laughs> I'll I'll also point back at the polar bear and keep running. <laughs> yeah. So the two of you see this, and you look, and you see this polar, this massive polar bear. You've never seen a bear this big in your life, uh, where you came from. Mostly black bears, brown bears. They don't get to this size or girth as a polar bear. And this thing has its teeth bared. It's running straight at them, charging massive claws, uh, just knocking anything and everything out of its way. And uh, Aurora just goes by, points at you like, eh? oh, points at the bear. I'll, I'll also take uh, Yonaye with me as well, like as, as I'm going. To... <laughs> Good idea. Gather her up. <laughs> and the bear comes. I'll just take this one with me. <laughs> the bear comes crashing into the fur that um, that Aurora tossed onto the two orcs, and just like leaps on top of him, just starts mauling. And you're standing there, Null, watching this. As this is playing out, and there's anarchy in the streets, all of a sudden you hear whistles blowing, and it looks like the town guard have shown up, and they start, like, getting in between there. They kind of start trying to um, calm down the bear. The owner of the bear has also come over, and he's, like, giving it treats and trying to calm it down. And, and I try and calm it. down the bear as well, because I don't want the bear getting hurt by the town watch. Sure. You want me to hold your kebab, too? <laughs> I've eaten it. I was going to say, I think Grey Cat's going to end up with a bunch of kebabs while everybody's off doing this stuff. It's so, big, an animal handling roll? Yes, please. Which I will push. Yes. All right. Very good. So you succeed. Just go ahead and take a point off of your empathy. And give yourself another willpower point. And, uh, yeah, you get in there. The town guard looks like they're getting ready to raise some clubs, and they're going to hit this thing. And you get in between them, and you're like, no, 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 no. And you're there beside the um, the actual owner of this polar bear. And the two of you are, like, calm it down. The owner's, like, kind of petting, scratched behind its hey, ears. He's holding out, like, some dried fish for it. Yeah. Calm down. It's okay. Did they, pass, did they pick a fight? Did they pick a fight with you? Did the big mean orcs pick a fight with you? That's not right. I know. You poor thing. It's okay. It's okay now. There you go. Good boy. Good boy. As you're, as you're whispering and, and calming this polar bear down, it starts to, it calms down and it, it lays down in the snow and it holds the dried fish in its paws and it kind of starts eating it and it, it's no longer raging or chasing after everybody or, or thrashing some orcs. Um, no, this is happening right beside you. I'm assuming you're still standing there as all this is playing out. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty pissed off actually, um, because this is this is my chance to you know show my worth as an orc to a bunch of you know to some other orcs and how else to spread the news of Emperor Haraka than to you know beat it into their skulls, and my companions just have no sense of proper decency really. <laughs> so I'm just standing there like you know absolutely but you know baffled and gobsmacked like what is going on Aru sidles up keep up <laughs> <laughs> yeah i got several <laughs> the town guard they kind of start asking around what happened nobody's really giving a clear answer nobody really saw what Aurora oh, I did i will 
Uh, sure, Null's gonna tell them. They're also ushering those two orcs away. They're taking them away to local uh, like hospital or somewhere to be looked after because they've just been mauled by a giant polar bear. But, uh, yeah, what, what did you see? You said you saw something? What happened? Null Red Hand. I am responsible for their injuries. Remember that. You... You're responsible for the injuries. We saw a bear mauled these two. Gentlemen yes, when we yes. Up. These two orcs. But I, I drew first. I <laughs> drew first blood. Going Rambo here. <laughs> I drew first blood. Um. <laughs> he looks the other one. Like, should we take him in for questioning? Are they humans? They are two humans. I'm gonna kind of puff up my chest and try and like loom over them. I'm, I'm quite big. <laughs> yes. Um. Okay. What? And they, they take out like a little. Pad, like Noel, what was it? Red hand. Red hand. Okay. Well, what were we watching you? Did you just did you just get here? What? Are, what? Are, what? Are, Don't are forget you, my name. Where, where are you headed? Wherever. Wait. Oh uh, well, we won't bother you. That's where we're going. And Noel is going to have but other people that are none of your business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Problem. This one's got the right idea. You listen. You listen to the. The goblin riding a big, that large wolf there, and um, I should headbutt more people. No, no, right? Okay. Mind your I... manners. Mind your manners while you're here in bitter reach. Otherwise, you're gonna you're gonna be brought to the marshal, and we'll lock you up. All right. A word of warning. <laughs> Noel, red hand. <laughs> Say all awkwardly as they look down at the notepad as they recite your your name, because they've already forgotten it. Yeah. <sighs> So, um, can we please go buy stuff now and leave <laughs> this place? Uh, I'm just gonna check in, uh, and uh, Aurora's gonna ask um, Yanaya if she's all right, if she's hurt. Like, there's kind of like, you know, that kind of concern, just looking up and down. I'm fine. Stupid young orcs picking fights yes. with silly. Useless orcs. You yes, take I know. Take him that's, away that's... from all these people, yes. and then point him at the bitter reach and the wastes, and find something big for him to take home and show the other orcs. It'll be fine. Just, but to put. Yes, you yes. Head but you... glaciers. Let's find out. Yes, yes, but you, you, you can't put yourself in danger like that. Why? I mean, if you got injured, I, I, I just, I'm. What are you saying? I'm saying I it's, could... it's... They're it's only orcs. Why put yourself between two orcs that are measuring each other's tusks. Well... <sighs> Let's go shopping. Yes. We'll, uh... I'll, I'll walk behind, kind of feeling a little bit, you know, like, you know, like, I, I'm, like... You know, she, she's she's taking taking a child on a sh uh, you know the, to the to the markets you know kind of dragging feet behind. <laughs> Excellent. Measuring each other's tusks. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. All right, so you guys continue to hedge your way down the streets, and you get to a fork in the road, and you kind of ask around like, where 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 is Augur? So we need. We're looking for first. Like you're freezing. Your your teeth are chattering. You're shivering. Um. And uh, they point you down to the left. It's number four on your map there. They say, oh, Agram's just down there. You can find it, no problem. All sorts of pelts and such hanging outside. Point you in that, in that uh, direction. Very good. Uh, chop, chop. Yep. Or, or something like that. But let's keep moving. Or, or we're going to freeze. <laughs> yep. We should have kept the polar bear. Oh, yeah. Us. I really want to pull her bear. What? Nothing against you, Greycat. Yeah, you're yeah. When you say that, Greycat kind of like growls at you. <laughs> you're the best, Greycat. But look at those big thingies rumbling along. <laughs> they could eat me for breakfast. It's great. Well, look, if we somehow don't manage to die, I'll buy you one for the solstice. Promise? Will die? Maybe we'll find some out there. I mean, they must live somewhere, and they're white, so they probably like snow. Oh, oh that makes sense. True. And also, you've already talked to one, and, and you know how to calm yeah. them down. Yeah. Oh, that's just animals. Air whisper. Very good. Oh, there, there's, there's the shop. 
thing where we get stuff for money. Yeah, you guys arrive at the shop. It's a, it's a humble house uh, in front of you, but there's furs and skins and fabrics hanging in the windows and outside like the, the person you encountered in the street told you. And you, you, It's very enticing. It's very welcoming when you, when you see that to come <clears> into this shop. Uh, and as you do so, you enter, and um, you're greeted by a very tall, thin man, a human dressed all in black. Extremely, like, probably, like, eye to eye with you, Noel. Extremely tall. And he, he kind of walks over. He's very reserved in uh, the way he speaks and the way he looks. He's not surprised, again, by the look of you. Um, even at Grey Cat entering his, his shop, which I'm assuming Grey Cat does. Uh, he's not yeah, even... Yeah. I, and Kara actually wanted to go into outside to go, Stay here, Grey Cat. Be a good girl. Grey Cat curls You're getting up a and... treat when I come back. <laughs> Let's out a whimper and kind of curls up in some furs outside the shop. And the man comes over, and he just kind of looks all of you up and down. You're here for some winter gear, I take it? Yes, it is cold. Mm. Yes, well, we should have things of your size. Um, and he, he, he brings out some big, heavy fur jackets and some proper footwear, some gloves, something to cover your heads. And... Um, Everything's available. All the clothes are available out of the main book, but everything here is twice the cost of what it is back in uh, back in the south. So um, you can buy whatever you want, but it's a little bit costlier out here on the frontier. So, for example, great fur is three silver there, so it'll be six silver here. Boots mm. are also six silver. It's a uh, decimal coinage, right? Ten silver to a gold. Correct. All right, so effectively we have 24 silver, and to fully equip us would be six silver apiece. There's five of us, so we're six silver short. Well, someone's freaking me out. I have six silver. Six silver okay. for what? For a, for both boots and a for great fur, boots right? and they're right. each six silver for a coat and six silver for boots. Oh, oh there's three silver, silver in the book in the uh, back. Oh game. right, okay. Um, I I've, uh, I've got five silver. I can I can put in and well, if we count them together. Um, does anyone else have money? Of, I hold out a handful of coppers. Uh, I've got six silver. All right. He's watching you all kind of pool your money together. He's seen this before. He goes a little short. You what? Who are you calling short? <laughs> <laughs> Um, there are services we can provide to make up the shortfall, healing. Yeah, um, he says, um, the marshal's always looking for um, people to take on odd jobs around Northfall. I'm sure you could see him about getting some money. Or, if you're very lucky, you can go meet uh, Igmar there at the large house on the hill. He is the one who uh, sends and pays adventurers to go out into the, the Bitter Reach. He pays very well for any elven treasures you may find out there. Perhaps you can gain an audience with him. How oh, much are we can. short? It's like one gold, two silver each for All right. <laughs> from two pieces of clothing. So basically, and like I... Two and a bit gold. Okay, so I can pay for myself and one other person to get fully kitted out. Um... I have, um, if mechanically speaking, if we're rolling to survive the cold, it's strength plus endurance, and I'm pretty good at that. So I'm, I will probably be the last. Also, I'm macho, so I will. All right. Well, I have bugger all strength, and no endurance, so I'm definitely kidding myself out. Yep. Uh, is anyone else? Oh, uh, you should. You, we, we should pull our money together and get Corrin something because he's, you know, like. Twiggy and thin, and he's going to. Yeah, it's just weather. <laughs> You're going to be a popsicle in, in half a day. Yeah, but if we get an advance on some money from the man in the house, then you're we going could to buy freeze the rest. on the way to the house if we don't do something about it. <laughs> At least get some boots. Mm -hmm. Yes, and don't forget, our kind benefactor wanted us to survive, so um, I'm sure it's no trouble at all. Um, I will buy two suits, um, suit and pants for myself and for, um, 
uh, for Corin. Okay. Oh, thanks. Very good. That's really nice. You put them oh, on, and oh, you instantly feel more. You know, when you guys go back <laughs> outside, it's like, oh, it's not maybe not so bad here after all. Once we have the you proper gear. <laughs> the rest of you are shivering, and this is you're you're on the uh, you're on the ocean still, so you've got mm-hmm. like warmer currents coming in. You guys haven't even felt the real cold of the Bitter Reach yet, where you currently are. Um, but- once we're outside, I'm gonna take off my coat and give it to uh, uh, Yona Eng. No, put the coat on. Doesn't no. it properly? It yeah. I'm old. It's, okay. it's fine. It's the, Look, I, I'm going to take this jacket off anyway in a bit. It'll be no, fine. Your coat, your coat is thinner than mine. No, and it's not. It's, it's good. As, as, did you, as, mm, did you but, put the coat on? It can only get worse. If she ties mittens through the sleeves, then you know you're in trouble. Okay. I keep my coat on. Sellotape <laughs> the coat to the people. Yeah. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Nothing right. like the threat of mittens. Yeah. Right? Okay. Now, this has only solved our problem to a smaller degree. We still need at least three gold and six silver before we're uh, able to really do anything. If the guards have some tasks around town, then at the very least we'll be avoiding the bitter cold. I suggest we maybe start with there, but uh, I don't really do well with authority, so... We should speak to the chieftain. I need to tell them about Emperor Haraka. Um. Okay. Maybe we talk to the person in the big house and don't mention any emperors. Must be an orc in charge of this place, surely. I don't think so. No, it's generally not how these uh, hub towns work. Um, no orc would live in such a decadent big house. It would be wasteful. You have never met Emperor Raka, the greatest of his kind. It's true, I have never met Emperor Haraka. He lives in a glorious castle on top of a hill. Like this one, have, only ha, much ha, more glorious. Have you met the Emperor? Yes. Uh, what's, what's he like? He, like? <laughs> <laughs> he is a bit he's a bit big around the belly. But he's the Emperor, he's allowed. He's strong. I'm, I, I'm going to try and encourage um, uh, Noel to talk about the Emperor at great length, and um, during which I'd like to, um, I'd like to also just kind of keep a weather ear out. Uh, three things I'm going to be looking for is I'm going to be looking for where the general authorities would be, like a marshal's house, a sure. town hall, whatever. Yeah. I would also like to see if there's an equal kind of guild. Um, yeah. guild position, you know, like, you know, like a, like a merchantile guild or, you know, a carpenter's guild, someone who would obviously have a lot of money to basically pay and trade mm-hmm. and, um, uh, some sort of criminal underground. So, uh, right. thieves guild, um, you know, sort of black market, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So it's just more about like spending a few, maybe even hours walking around and just Taking you know. the sights, li- over like listening conversations as you're yeah, going through yeah, the streets yeah. and things like that. Yeah, unless no. some, unless, unless someone else is something else they they think we should be doing. I mean, that's just. No, no, I'm good. What? I'm mm. I thought we talked and... to. Sorry, you're you know, yeah. No, what are you saying? Uh, I thought we talked to the big person in the big house, and they say he get us elven stuff, and then we get elven stuff, and they give us money, and then we can afford something to wear. Yes, that is a. Direct plan. That was a plan, right? Oh, we could right. split up. No. Because <laughs> <laughs> good, excellent. <laughs> oh, that's been decided. You can't leave the orc alone. He will get into petty fights with petty orcs that will not honor the chief. Because they're easy fights. Why would you pick easy fights? This is just a waste of your time. You're supposed to pick big fights and win big fights. Not anyway. And then um, Frost will no doubt come back with somebody else's clothes, which will get us into more trouble. And the pair of you will try and take a polar bear home with you. And it's never going on the boat. 
and they won't without we don't have enough coin to get a polar bear on a boat so no we're not i mean up. If, if we manage to get a polar bear it's really big and warm and fuzzy but i get your point yeah. we stay together that... and we keep each other out of trouble so... anybody with a boat wouldn't argue with us if we had a polar bear all right also, kind of polar bears. No polar bears, no polar bears, no polar bears. Okay, fine, no stealing, no fighting, no polar bears. Um, everyone do as Yonayu says, she knows what we're doing. So, where, where, where to Yonayu? Let's go talk to the man in the big house. Good, where's, where's Frost Chief off to? <laughs> <laughs> Frost and, and Noel, because... Uh... Yep, yep, still yep. asking about yep. about the Emperor. Just yep. that's, that's absolutely fascinating. And how many wives did you say? Say the emperor had. <laughs> oh, just one. Ah, just she one. must. She must have been a radiant orcish beauty. She is the most beautiful orc in the in our entire existence. Ah, so you would say that you've got eyes for the emperor's wife? No, 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 no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Look around. No, no. <laughs> uh. All right, so you guys are making your way through the streets. You're making small talk, chit chat. You're also listening as you are, and you hear <laughs> people speaking about things. You over here, you get a very good idea that this Ingmarg, the one who has the giant house there on the hill, basically is the local guild slash criminal organization slash underground. But he does it with a very like forward facing facade. Uh, he does hire adventurers to go out there and find goods. And he does pay them when they bring them back, old elvish relics and such. But uh, it is said that he does not give fair prices. But he's the only one that can trade gold and money for these things. There are, are a few others that will trade um, for these relics, but it's only furs. So he's really the only one. And he sends out all these legions of, of newbies who come to, the, to uh, the Bitter Reach to go out there and find whatever. And then when they bring it back, he cheats them and gives them only a portion of the money you also hear some weird things about him as you're walking through the streets you know you hear some people talking and one person insists that he's he's really a demon who wants to plunge the bitter reach into darkness and despair others say that he's got uh ogres patrolling his treasure room at the bottom of his mansion others uh, say sorry, what was his name again his name is ingmarg i-n-g oh. ing ing Yep. I N G M A R G Ingmarg. Let's see. Do I have? Oh, I'm on my players tab. I gotta go to my GM's one here. Ogres I think... guarding ogres guarding his um his horde in the yes. Like, that is the rumor. The, they say there's below two... the castle. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do I have a legend that I can share with you for him? I'm not seeing one. Oh, let me read. I think I have one here. Uh, so yeah, we'll unlock a legend for Igmarg. No one has ever bargained with Igmarg and won. He is the stingiest of all peddlers in the Bitter Reach, but he is the only one who has the coin to pay for your fines. Sure, you can also go to Tygnar, but he only has the resources to buy the simplest of items. If you want to sell something of real value, you have to go to Ingmarg. So that's what you hear from the others as you're kind of walking around. You see other adventurers. They're, they're talking about going there. You see, you kind of get close to his to his mansion. And there's like a line of people waiting to get in there. And they all look like you. They're fresh off the boat. They're freezing, teeth chattering. But they're here to strike it rich. And this is the man to send them out to the reach and pay them their money. So have you heard that apparently he likes to put people in the queue to size people up before he gets to talk to them? I heard that one time, that he has people in the lineup just listening to what you're saying so that he can work out who's worth seeing. I want to try and um, dissuade oh. some of the other people ah, in the queue from being there. you're trying to spread some rumors. Uh, yes, yeah. I like that. Manipulation for me, please. And laugh I, in the face I'm gonna, of manipulation. I'm gonna give you a, uh, I'm gonna give you a plus one on this. I like this. It's a good scenario. People are they're Sweet. tired, they're cold, they're waiting, they're kind of pissed off, and so it's gonna be a little bit easier to persuade these people. Would you like to push that? <laughs> sure, why not? Okay. Yeah, okay. Very uh -huh. good. Hey, not bad. Just take one off your empathy and you start you start saying this, like you're standing there with the group of 
your friends, and you're you're saying this rather loudly, and you're kind of giving it off matter of fact. You 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 come across as almost an authority, like you've been here before, and like ah, these guys are wasting time. <laughs> the cold is doing a number on my empathy. I'll tell you that for nothing. <laughs> And um, the people behind you, they turn around. They're, you could, they're obviously listening in. Like, they're looking at you. They're not even making it, um, like, they're not even trying to hide it. So they, they start talking, and they kind of break away. And you move up in line a little bit more. And you continue on with this. You keep up this, <laughs> this whole conversation. And a few more, and a few more. And after you, you know it, the line has thinned out quite a bit. And you're, you're, you're next to get to these big, great doors in front of this big three-story mansion. And once you're there now, you see it. And this thing is beautiful. It's gorgeous. It would rival any mansion or castle you would have encountered back in the south. And it is, like I said, it stands out. More than anything except here. Except Emperor Haraka's, which is better. It, no, except for Emperor oh, yes. Haraka's. By far. <laughs> and his many wives. But um, you get there, and there are two guards. Not city guards. These look like they're personal men that have been hired to stand at the gates. So you get up there, and they're like, Yes, you got a, you have an appointment with Igmark. What, 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 what's your name? Uh, are they orcs? No, they are men. Okay. You don't have to... No I... risk of headbutting. <laughs> We are here to uh, offer services to the great Ingmarg. Uh, what's your name? I am Frost. Frost. These Frost. are uh, these are my companions: Yonaye, Karu, Nol, and Corin. Uh, we don't have you list. We've never seen you before. We can put you down and. Um... We'll call on you in a couple days when he has some time to meet with you. There's nobody else um, to see. They uh, all went away. Your chieftain will want to see another orc. I'm chieftain? Sure. Yes. Another orc? Yes. Your chieftain is an orc, right? Ingmar is a man. Uh, so the these guys seem like they're just like, you know, even even though the, um, the crowd's kind of cleared off a bit more. Yeah. Um, what's surrounding the mansion? There's a wall around the mansion, and the wall stops where the, the cliff face just kind of drops straight off and down. And there's okay. like there's a big gate behind them. They're, they're, they're standing in front of a gate, basically barring entrance from anybody just walking into this mansion. All right. Is there any kind of like, um, like trees or um decorations or anything like that um just in the vicinity there wouldn't be any trees but um uh, the the gates are rather ornate uh and there are statues on the outside as well you actually see a statue of who you're assuming is igmarg uh it's of a rather large man standing there in a very proud pose looking out towards the reach all right uh, what I'd like to do here is um, find a, so, sort of a point in which I could uh, stick a dagger in. Sure. And what I want to do is I want to try and impress them by throwing a multitude of daggers and try to hit almost a precise straight line. And um, what I would also like to do is with a, uh, a couple of copper, um, I want to have one copper piece stuck through a uh, one of my daggers and flick the other one in the air and then pretend like I threw the last one through the dagger but then catch it and kind of pocket it. Nice. Okay. Um, just go ahead and give me a throwing dagger roll. Just do one. And you will get the plus one on that for your throwing arm. Okay. Uh, how do I add a plus one? Uh, when you click the the throwing dagger on your foundry, it'll pop up with, with an actual window, see, a window. Oh, uh, yep. And under modifier, just put a one in there. Okay. I had to click on it myself to make sure what I was saying was correct. Oh my goodness! All those dice. What? Okay. So ah. okay, here's the thing. You've got a one <laughs> on your gear dice. If you push it, your dagger will break and you'll lose it. Your throwing dagger. That's fine. You're I've cool got, with that. Like, you're five. Yeah, I've okay. got like five daggers. So That's go fine. ahead and push it. Your dagger will break, but you pull it off. You just straight line. The last one, we'll say the one that goes through the coin, you trick them that goes through the coin, is the one that breaks in doing so, like setting it up. That one kind of is unusable after that, but you throw it a straight line, do the last of the coin, and the two guards stand there watching, and they're just like, um, 
Can I sneak a look at their list while he's doing that? Sure. <laughs> sure. See if there's any, like, yeah. priority people to be allowed in all the time. For sure. He rolled well enough. I'm not going to make you roll a stealth or anything like that. They're, they're, they're in awe of this, this, this feat with these throwing daggers. And you kind of just, like, look over at the, the list, and uh, they don't pay any notice to it. And you do see that uh, there is a few names at the at the top of the list there. Um, are, you, do, are you wanting to quote them? Or... Yeah. Yeah, they said we could have their slot when they left. Sure. A name at the top list is Fardal. So they, they turn back around, and you're standing there back where you were, and they're like, ah. Oh, well, so, was... so what, yeah, so what, what I'll say to them is... I'm sure Igma will want to see us, because I will not be coming back here again if I am turned away now. Sure, they they look over the shoulder at the rest of the group, and there's really not very many people left in line anymore, and they look at you, and they then go... Did you just see what he did with the knives? With the knives? <laughs> Fonda was impressed. He said we could have his slot. They kind of, they're very confused. They kind of do a double take. They look down to the sheet. They look, they look over Kar Karu. They look at you and they're like, um, yeah, 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 fine. And then they open the gates and then go inside, wait in the uh, lobby and someone will come get you to uh, meet Ig Ingmar. And you're I'm going to grab my daggers. And then sure. when I grab the other one, it's like, tink, dang it. Um, I'll, I'll still keep the shard though, like the, the, the little dagger hand and the handle and never sure. know when you need a shank. Actually, no, I'll put it in my boot. I'm going to put the broken dagger piece just in my boot. Very Don't good. Don't forget to take the willpower points as well from the um, from the attribute damage. You're two, yeah. yeah, you're two willpower and your you're damage, but you guys are accruing willpower like way faster than any other group, <laughs> group that I've had in Forbidden Lands, which isn't a bad thing. Uh, you just got to you know, sleep for a quarter day and you're, you're good, but... All right, so you're ushered in, and this, the inside, just the lobby of this place is super impressive. So it opens up, and there's a big grand staircase in front of you leading up to the second and third story. There are art, pieces of artwork, like like um, statues built out of bone. It appears like maybe whale bone or something, or maybe these pike beasts they spoke of, these sculptures crafted out of them. Big paintings, mantles, everywhere. This place is just decadence here on the frontier. And you wait for a few moments, and after some time, um, someone comes to get you, and they usher you into into an office. Say, Igmarg is ready to meet with you. And they bring you in, and they open these big double doors, and inside is a great big desk, a big chair, and piles of books piled up on the, um, the desk itself. It looks like there's piles of coin as well. There's a giant portrait behind a man who's sitting in the chair, and it is of the man who is sitting in the chair. And there are bookcases everywhere. And you see this this human. He's rather large, big, big stomach. He's got um, bald on top, but kind of like long, greasy, dirty hair in the back. He's got big, decadent, beautiful robe um, furs all over him. You notice all of his fingers have multiple rings on them. They're emerald and ivory and silver and gold. And he's sitting there, and he's looking down. He's counting money. It looks like he's keeping track of this in a, in a ledger. And he looks up, and he smiles at the group of you. And um, he's just a just a greasy character. <laughs> you get that just seeing him right off the bat. He stands up, and ah, <laughs> ah, so new, uh, new fresh meat for the reach, huh? Come in, come in. I heard that you're quite skilled with a dagger. And he looks at you, Aurora. Uh, I, uh, Aurora will bow. So, what uh, what can I do for you here? When did you arrive here in the Reach? Oh, we mm. just arrived this morning, but we heard you were the person to talk to. <laughs> yes, yes, word travels around here. People know. They know I'm the one truly in charge. Yes. So, you've come here for work? If there's oh. some going... I could arrange something. I oh, let me see. So you're new here. It looks and he looks at the group of you. And it's like two of you are dressed for the conditions. Um, how about we start you off easy? Uh, I don't want you to die too soon. I do. I do want some of the the riches there on the reach to be brought back to me. 
I'll tell you what. I sent a group, not unlike your own, a few days ago, due west, to go to the Tower of the Farseers. They were there to, uh, I sent them there to gather uh, what, what, whatever it is that lies at the top of the tower. Many, many r rumor that there are gems, special gems, those that shine as bright as a star up there in the tower. And I want it. I want it if it's there. And if you get there and you happen to find them and they're dead, I would appreciate if you bring their gear back to me as well. I'll pay you handsomely for it. They owe me for that gear. What do you say? Are you willing to take on this task? I want my stuff back, and I want the treasure that lies at the top. See, I... Sound of farseers. That sounds cool. <laughs> yes, the... You gave them gear? Yes, I gave... they needed some weapons and such. There was a down payment. They, they... I would take it off their pay when they came back. Mm. Maybe if we can just keep their gear? Um, just a little bit... Um, no. I'll take it off your pay. That's fine. You can keep it. I'll, just... I'll take it off with... Mm, good. You good, sent good. you sent people to their death, and you want to us to go fetch their gear and give it back to you? And hey, whatever treasures lie there, yes, yes, I want what's mine. You back. sit here and do not go for it yourself, and you expect us to to not keep the plunder that we find rightfully in a dangerous. It is dangerous there, right? He like looks at the rest of you, kind of like, "What's with this guy?" And he goes, and he goes um, "I'll take it off your pay. You can keep it. Fine." No, no, no. You pay us to bring you the this gem. Yes, give me the gem and I'll pay you. You don't uh, take it. Mm. Oh, no. Danger. No, the danger, no. Noel danger. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like we need to give Noel a safe word. Like molasses. <laughs> Where's the X card when you need it? Molasses. <laughs> yeah. molasses. No, no, look, over here. <laughs> yeah. Your arrangement is difficult we understand that this task of course comes with many dangers and that of course it would afford us uh, a certain advantage to have the gear before we embark on on this uh, this journey the down payment that you offered to these individuals in the first place is more than acceptable to allow us to be able to conduct our work but there is a little something more if you are indeed after the treasure, then it is going to do much more in your hands than it is ours. But what specifically would be the compensation for such value and wealth? He lets out a big sigh when you ask that. <sighs> yes, I always want to know what you're getting paid up front, don't you? All of you, you're all the same. <sighs> and he grabs one of his ledgers and he starts kind of going through it. And he's got a little abacus there. And you, if, if there is the star gem... That is rumored to be up there. You bring it back to me. I will reward you with ten gold pieces. Ten gold pieces is, of course, a, uh, a, a very, very generous sum. And you are indeed wow. definitely true to your name and reputation when it comes to being the most reliable source of wealth and commerce in this small town. But I'm sure... Uh, you could understand uh, a warm hearth and a good meal would be trifles for one such as yourself. He smiles and he leans back. He goes, okay. All right. All right. I'll tell you what. I'll set you up at the inn. Room for the night. A meal. Before you head on out. How does that sound? I'll uh, look at the others. And close for the goblin. Sounds good. 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 Cuss and Dangs. Uh, Go to Cuss and Dangs. They'll have all the information. They'll send one of my men. And you're going to have free room and board for the night. Before you set off. <laughs> he laughs. <laughs> Frost. Frost. Mm -hmm. if, if we don't get get some um, some clothes for Karu, the, the, they're going to be very, very cold. Like, I'll be fine. Oh. And, well, they'll, and they'll, Noel they'll, they'll, is big and young, but Carol he said he's, he's going to be giving us uh, uh, the, the the stuff to be able to go there. Oh, okay. Sorry, but I yes, was distracted. No. no, it's fine. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I don't need anything. I'll, I'll, I'll step forward and uh, and put up um, my hand to shake. 
Um, sure. He he holds his hand out, and he's a he's a large man, like not just in girth, but he is a big man as well. And he's got a real big hand, reaches out and, and grips your hand, and, and shakes your paw, <laughs> mm -hmm. if if you oh, will. Yeah. It, yeah, this uh, it's kind of like a leathered paw, and um, Frost is very lean. Like, even for uh, a wolfkin, which is fundamentally a, a warrior type, um, she is very, very slender. Um, but we'll shake it as firmly as she can, and um, then uh, say, we well, we shall not keep you any further. Thank you for your time. Very good, very good. As, you, as you're turning and walking out, he goes, oh, by the way! Uh, it's rumored there's a dragon that lives at the top of the tower, so, uh, d do take care! I'll, I'll hit... I'll hit <laughs> Null on the shoulder and be like, There we go! <laughs> dragon! Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> d d Dragon! Yeah, yeah, a dragon lives at the top of the tower. So, uh, yeah, just, uh, just be aware. Be aware. It'll only be a little one. Otherwise it couldn't live at the top of the tower, it'd have to live in a cave. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, little, little dragon, no problem. But he got us, but he got us good, he did. I'll look but, across at Noll and go, but with really big claws and teeth. <laughs> well, on the plus side, at least we will have a good meal before we die. Yeah. <laughs> Another one. Oh yeah, on top of the kebabs. <laughs> top of the kebabs. <laughs> kebabs are a snack. It was just an appetizer. Yeah, just an appetizer. That was just the entertainment food. Um, oh, you guys eat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're wolfkin. We we store for the winter. Um, so uh, we're gonna be heading into the wilderness soon. It's just like get it while you can. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Mm. Um, all right, so um, we'll make our way to because uh, you you mentioned that resting in order to restore some of the damage that yeah. We, so you you sleep for the night or the next quarter day. Uh, mm -hmm. It is pretty late in the day at this point, uh, and you get all of your your tribute points back that you lost through pushing or fighting or whatever. So that's all it's going to take is sleeping through the night, and you're good. You're good in all your stats. Cool. And we get to keep our will. You get to keep your willpower. Those are yours to keep. Yeah. All right. Um, I'll kind of sleep with one eye open, if that makes sense. Like... While I while while in this particular town, I'd like to maybe sleep in the same room as um, both um, uh, Karu and, if not Karu, uh, Noel. Sure. Well, we're gonna say that um, Ingmar rented like a, a group room for all of you. It's a large room for the whole party to to sleep in at Cuss yeah. and Dang's. Sweet. Mm -hmm. Very good. And Kairu just rolls out um, several um, blankets and everything and uses Grey Cat as a pillow. Yeah, nice. <laughs> <laughs> the two curl up inside Grey Cat or beside the Grey Cat. Nice. Sleep yeah, I'm not sleeping on those beds. <laughs> Other like... people will have slept on those. I'll sleep on the floor. Alright. <laughs> Other people will have stepped on that. Yeah, but stepping on it would be much better because they have shoes. Whereas if they've slept in it, then they'll sweat and I'll hold up my um, my sleeping fur to you. What, my fur? No, no, it's it's fine. I'm, I'm used to sleeping on the floor. It's a nice flat floor. There's no rocks or twigs. And it's level. You don't roll. Very good. Very good. You don't want to wake up some, some other place, then you fell asleep. That happens. So, we sleep now. I think. Or does so. anyone else want to to headbutt someone or steal things or do whatever? I'm dreaming not. of dragons right now. <laughs> <laughs> Stab you. <laughs> That's good. He doesn't need to be headbutted to sleep. <laughs> um. So, so Frost will when she prepare when she sort of has the meal and um, prepares for for bed. She'll actually not finish all of her food, and at the end of the night, just before she goes to bed, she'll put what she hasn't eaten, um, just kind of out on the side, 
and um, she'll just kind of leave it as an offering um, on the window. Very good. Before going to bed. Yeah. Uh, you put the offering out there. As you stand there at the window, you do notice the, the lighthouse that you saw when you came in is now lit up and bright mm. shining out onto the ocean. Where it wasn't lit before. That lighthouse that got your attention earlier. If the lighthouse is lit, I'm going to sit and stare at it like a moth. <laughs> really? I'll tell you, you what. You very strange. <laughs> You're a strange man. Um, <laughs> make me an insight roll, please. Oh yeah! I'll give you a, I'll give you a plus one on it. Oh. Are you good at insight? Is that one of your uh, your better? It's, it's my thing. Oh, right, excellent! I'll give you a minus two then. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, I insighted. You look, and typically there'd be a a lighthouse keeper there, and you're watching to see signs of someone who lit this and is maintaining it. You see an outline or a shape of someone, um. But, like, when they get near the, the light, instead of, like, a shadow or silhouette, they're almost, like, transparent. This person that you see in the lighthouse. It's hard to make out from this distance, but it something seems a little off with whoever or whatever this Yeah, did we not hear a rumor about them having a ghostly lighthouse or something? Mm. Mm. I'm going to say you did. I'm going to say you did. Mm. Are we all sleeping or are you up by yourself? Or is anyone else? Is anyone well, else? Well, so as, as you're all getting ready for that, I, like, I will sleep. Aurora's putting out the the offerings, and Corin is sitting there at the the window, and everybody else is getting like tucked in or snuggled in next to Grey Cat and ready for the night. Has Grey Cat been outside for business? You can't just poo in here. Have you brushed your teeth? Did you pack everything properly in your bag? Uh, did... Yes. Why? Uh, probably. Because if you keep your teeth clean, it's easier to bite things. But if you don't keep them clean, it hurts more when you bite people. And for longer. Yep. Oh, anyway. <laughs> and they have to make virulence rolls. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Every time Karu bites someone. Yep. <laughs> Minor poison. <laughs> Alright, so you watch this. Everybody's just settling down for the night, calling an evening, sleeping getting all their attributes back and waking up the next morning. Is that the plan? Yes. Yep. Very good. All right. So you guys have a very comfortable sound sleep here. It is quite noisy. Um, all of the, the commotion going on downstairs uh, in the bottom, uh, main floor of this inn. This is like the congregating point for all of the people who come here to find their riches in the bitter reach. So there are a lot of people here. There are people who have also cashed in on things they found out there and they're spending their money on alcohol and food and whatever other vices they can find here. So the party goes on all night, but despite that, it's been a long day. It's been a long journey. It's been a while since you've been on ground, like on land. Mm -hmm. You've just got off the ship earlier this day. So you sleep quite well this evening. And you wake up the next morning, the sun shining brightly through the window and you're ready to, to set out into the bitter reach to see if you can find the Tower of the Farseers mm. and possibly get some riches from Ingmar. All right, is there anything you want to do before you leave town? Can I just confirm, like, do we actually get gear from Ingmar? You're going to wake up the next morning and there will be uh, cold weather gear waiting for you, That uh, the ones that didn't have it. So but there is the... a note that says, I expect this returned upon a payment yeah. of... Of yep. the relic. Um, and we're talking great fur and... Great boots, fur right? and boots, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so it's actually quite a sunny day. It's cold, but it's not, like, storming. It's not snowing. There's no blizzard. So it's actually a great day for you guys to set out for your first adventure into the Bitter Reach. You guys get to one of the gates there. And you notice that there's a big, giant ice wall all the way around Northfall protecting it. And the gates themselves are actually made of, looks like, probably driftwood that has um, floated up near the beaches. Uh, bone, whale bones, and whatever else they could put together. 
And you get to the gates, and the guards kind of look you over, and they chuckle. Like, oh, another group heading out to the Reach, huh? You're going to go find your riches, are you? No, we're going to fight the dragon. Oh. <laughs> yeah, dragon. <laughs> they look at each other and laugh. Okay, all right, dragon slayers, good luck. Good luck. And they open this big gates, and they uh, kind of they laugh as the five of you go out <laughs> <laughs> into the world. Frost isn't laughing. <laughs> I'm not laughing. Once we're out the doors, Karu climbs on the back of Grey Cat, picks up the reins, and goes, See? <clears throat> So much open land. <laughs> you want to go? You want to go, girl? Let's go. And Grey Cat's just like panting, like ready, like almost going in circles. So <laughs> excited. <laughs> just ready to go. So we've got our map here now. So like I said, a big part of this is a hex crawl. So we're going we're gonna to be doing the hex crawl thing here. You should only be able to see a very small portion of this map. And it's going to uncover yeah. as we go through it as well. Um, so you should all have control of this thing. I won't move. You can see a little bit of snow falling. <laughs> You'll see a yeah. book there. If you, as we uncover and find things on the map, the legends for these things, if you click on them, will also be on it. You can read about them. So like the, the legend for North Falls there, and you can read that. Oh, it's not working for some reason. I'll fix that. But you were told it's due west. Due west of here you want to go. You can actually see in the distance in the west uh, quite a few, we'll say a few hexes away. You can see a big tower up in the leading up into the sky you can clearly see it so you know where you need to go even though it's black on there you just don't know what's waiting for you between here and that tower mm -hmm. and it's a big black marble tower sitting there and it looks like it, it's almost like touching the clouds it's so tall so you can't miss it but we now get to do some overland travel which is another aspect of this game yeah. a big part of forbidden lands if you click on the character sheet section, there is a beautiful party sheet that someone in the community has made for Forbidden Lands and Foundry. And I have all your tokens oh. on there. And if you click on the travel tab mm -hmm. of the party sheet, all of you should be listed on there on the others tab. You can actually mm -hmm. drag and drop your little tokens into whatever role you're going to take oh, on cool. for traveling Ooh. across the, the wilderness. And you can actually hit the the button in there, like above keep watch, you can hit it and it's actually going to roll it from your sheet once you put your token in there. It's oh, very nice. well designed. I love this thing. It's, it's like the best, one of the best aspects that's been created for this. It makes it idiot proof for me. <laughs> I, I, I need to use that too. So I'm it's probably great. going to use Foundry. <laughs> for yeah, that's game. pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Fun. So All right. we need to, someone's going to need to lead the way. So you're gonna be you're gonna be the, the pathfinder. You're gonna be finding the, mm -hmm. the path of least resistance through the snow, through the ice. Uh, and then we also need someone to keep watch. And that's the person who's gonna be looking out for danger. So if there is something, an encounter ahead of you, you see it before it sees them if you pass that role. That's what you're 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 making you're looking out for. Only one person can do each of these roles, and the same person can't do both. So lead the way is gonna use your survival skill, and keep watch uses scout. So I leave it up to the group of you to decide who is the best person for each task as we as we venture out. Okay. Who's got the highest survival? They should be the uh, leading the way, right? Well, I've got um, so I've got the the path of the forest talent, which means um, if I, I I can spend a willpower point to automatically succeed on the lead the way, and um, my survival on its own is six. Ooh, whoa! Yeah. I mean, I think because I'm, I'm old. I've done this before. Come save on. the willpower point until you like fail that role. Yeah, yeah. So you don't need to. But but what I'm saying is, yeah. if I lead the way, it's yep. very likely we can get to where we're going. However, I'm, if somebody else wants to lead the way, I'm all for that because I'll just stand at the back and just be go. Did you did you look? You didn't look at the thing, did you? You didn't. Karu would wave. Do you, do you want me to find the way, or do you want me to what you do? You want me as lookout? I'm I'm good at both. Um, you could look out on, on Grey Cat. I'll lead. Very good. Very good. Come on, Grey Cat. Follow your name and keep your eyes and your ears and your nose open. Come on. Come on. Um, oh, no. Where did I put myself? There we go. Oh, come on, computer. Nope. I'm failing at moving tokens. Are you, there you go. There we go. 
All right. That was, so that was harder than it should have been. <laughs> <laughs> so above each of you, you should see like keep watch. I think you can actually yeah you can keep you can click the click keep watch scouting for keep yeah. watching. Click lead the way survival, and it'll roll it from your character. This is brilliant. It's brilliant. It's all tied together. I love it. Um, I'm going to push the roll because it produced neither sixes nor ones. Which sounds good to me. All right, so you succeed. Push you it. Succeed now I've got one six on scouting. <laughs> so you're up there. You're a little bit ahead of Yannier, and you're you're on the back of Grey Cat, and you're skulking through the snow. And Grey Cat's not as camouflaged as it normally is, because everything is white around here. Normally, be blending in with their surroundings. So Grey Cat does stick out a little bit more than usual. But uh, you're hoping, being around the cold, hopefully it's 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 fur starts to to go more whitish, kind of like how. I don't know about you guys, but here a lot of animals in the winter, like rabbits here, all of a sudden just turn completely white in winter. And then they shed their winter fur and go back to being whatever color they were in the summer. Um, so lead the way. Do you want to yeah. push? So if I push and I still don't succeed, can I then spend the willpower point? Or do I have to decide now? That's the bit I, I uh, want to so double check. If you If you push and you don't succeed you'll still take the willpower damage but you'll um be able to like not have a mishap basically yeah okay well let's push it we might as well push it we could also have our first mishap yeah i'm all for all for shenanigans do you want me to forage or do you want me to make camp we don't we'll do that yet you can't forage what, when we stop march. you could then you can forage and make camp uh, okay. all right successful but you had just one one just one mm -hmm. one because it doesn't count off your skill dice mm -hmm. okay very good so to go ahead and take one point of uh, off of your your tribute mm -hmm. and kairu did not take any damage from pushing the scout awesome all right now so kairu you're up ahead you're on gray cat you're 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 a little bit ahead of everybody else and all of a sudden you squint you swear you see something in the sunlight shining down on the snow, which is also something you're not really used to. Your eyes are getting adjusted because the sun shining down on the snow is much brighter than you're used to. It's reflecting back, and so you're squinting a lot. And then you up ahead, you swear you see something. You see the shape of something in the distance. You swear it's is someone watching you? And then you, you kind of shake your head, you close your eyes, you rub your eyes, and you look again, and it's like, oh, is that a... Is that a are those ruins? And you're, you're just kind of like looking and you're, you can't really get a good idea of what you see ahead of you. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Right, Ken, let's talk to Yonaye. Um, Because if we just go there and scout on our own, she's going to scold us. And then she's going to put on our ears and put them along as, come on. So back to the group. Oi, oi, Yonege, Yonege. Huh? Uh, there's, there's, I think it's ruins. Um, something weird I had that way. Ooh, ooh, um, um. Not, not sure what it is yet. I think it's ruins, or maybe a person, or maybe person, p people in ruins. Maybe something that we could had, but, and, or rob. I don't know. Hmm. Um. Are we feeling like we should should go ahead, but folks? What is? How, is everybody everybody fastened? Have you fastened the helmet on properly? Are you going to be able to? It's not going to come off if you headbutt someone, are you? Or or maybe we, we should let Corin take a look at it because he's very good at looking. I he's good looking, but he's also good at you know seeing. Yes, yes, good. <laughs> well, while while all of you are talking, Noel gets his hammer out, his shield mm -hmm. out, and he just starts striding towards it. Oh, well, that's a decision. Let's keep up. <laughs> uh, I'll, um, uh, Frost will, Frost will take a moment, um, and make sure that Noel has, like, a good, like, maybe five meters ahead. Sure. Then start walking. <laughs> <laughs> and you're, so you're all looking at what Karu is pointing at, and you don't really see anything. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, what about is, if I true sight? Sure, what does True Sight do? True Sight is a spell that enhances my vision to be unnaturally sharp to see details at distant range as if you stand right next to it. All right. You can also see in darkness through smoke and fog 
any kind of disguise or shape shift as long as you've got a clear line of sight. All right. Aha, I knew Our... it. He's good at looking. <laughs> what do your elf eyes see? You so you burn a willpower, yep. right? Is that a willpower to do that? It doesn't say there's a willpower on it, or there it, was no it, indication of willpower on any of the spells that I looked all, at. All of the spells require at least one willpower to. Okay, so they, they must they be. always succeed. Yeah, and, and you don't you roll. Decide how always... many? Yeah, you decide how many willpower you spend, and you have to roll that many dice, or however many willpower you're spending. Sorry, and plus okay. for half elf, you roll one extra. Always. Okay, well I'll so, I'll spend one willpower. Okay. And where am I rolling? The, do I just, is there anything That's special? Sorry, I'm, I've not That's used Foundry no. before. How do I roll 2d6? I'm just going to take they a look. They definitely need to be base, they definitely need to be base dice because if they come up with um, a failure. Huh. No, you need to, you need to actually roll. For, you need to oh, here we go. Um, I'm just going to look at your character sheet here. One, two. Yeah, there's a, there's a roll button. There we go. Oh. oh no, that's roll one d six plus two. So, so if you, I put. The I found it. Spells on your character sheet. Yeah, you can actually click. Oh, you need, but you need to know which which dice are which. That's very important, right? So, because you because you need six. Um, it's it all it depends on whether there's a one there. I mean, that's obviously not a one, but. So on anyway. your character sheet, Ben, just go to the talents, and I actually yep. put all of your spells. Are you? Did you put your spells in there? I did. Here, let me uh, put drag and drop it in there for you, and then it'll be set. Oh, up. thank you. Otherwise, your your sheet has um, up there where pushes also has a roll button, and then you can just say, "Oh yeah, yeah roll three. Yes, it does. Thank you. What is it under? Which school do you know? It is Path of Sight, nice. Druid Talent. They're they're in there already, I think. Are they not? Are they? Oh, you added them. Um, I I typed them in. Yeah. Oh, Druid Talent. Path of Sight. Okay, but true spite sight is a spell, is it not? Yes, but there it comes off. It, Got it comes off the talent. So on your, do you see on spells now? There should be one with a black icon. It's like an eyeball yep. with an arrow. Click yep. on that, and it should bring up a another. Oh yeah, table. it's got base one, and then I add one for the half elf. Yes. Yeah, and. I there you go. And roll it. Cool. Power level three. Whoa. Uh, I think that's a mistake, isn't it? But that's fine. No, no, that's right. You get um, you get two power levels. You get a power level oh. per willpower point spent, and every extra success adds another power level. Right. All right. So no mishaps, no magical mishaps, because that could have happened. Your spells always go off, but you do have the chance of a mishap. So it goes off, and you look. You look in the distance, and you're like, there's nothing there. I... You have no idea what Karu is seeing. You you look up at the sun and you see the way it's shining on the snow and you're like you think the, the sun's playing tricks on Karu's eyes. Like it possible like a mirage or something because there is nothing there. It is just barren tundra in front of you. Just flat snow. So there is, there's, Null there's is nothing there. Running. There, there, and you're like, there's really well, I'm, nothing I'm not, there. I'm not running, I'm marching. Okay. Like like confidently forward no there's, like, there's, there's nothing there anything. okay i'll stop but then i could see i you but... illusion boom, boom, boom. light illusion from the sun on the snow into your eyes no i'm, I'm sorry no I'm no my magic my can shield. cut through it it's good that you saw something and we checked it because there could have been something there and it could have been full of treasure and this way we know <laughs> no treasure um, I'm going to smell the air and just see if there's any any scents lingering in the area. Okay. Did you want to use your wolfkin talent, or you just want to just kind of do a general? Uh, well, if I can find a particular smell, then I will. But if not, then no. Okay. Let's just do 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 survival for me, please. Survival roll. All right, so I'll have a... Yeah, so you start smelling and sniffing, and it's the wind is blowing in your direction. And from the direction of the tower that you're headed to, you can smell, you smell blood. 
distinct smell of blood traveling through the air. Um, all right, I'm going to use a willpower to lock onto the scent of blood. Mm-hmm. Um, and I will say, there. Uh, is the blood fresh? It does smell fresh. The smell of fresh blood on the wind. It's coming from this direction. Yeah, and you've locked right onto this. And uh, it leads you, like, right to the tower. Could it be our unfortunate predecessors? Mm. No. If the unfortunate predecessors fell before we left, the blood would not be this fresh. This is something new. I'll tell you, tell you what. Something even, has been attacked. Yeah, even, even, yes, without with using the willpower point, it is not, yeah, it is not, um, it's not blood you smelt before. Let's say that, a type of blood from a, from a creature or person or being that you've encountered before. This is different, the smell of mm. it. It is not, yes, it is not the person... It is not any of the kin I have ever encountered, or beast. Mm, I don't like it. Let's find out what it is. Is there a lot of blood, or is it like you know? Yes. There oh, is. There is a <gasps> let's let's look ahead. Let's come. Let's let's see. Uh, I would like I would like to take a moment to show a little bit concern for Grandma. Um, Why? Grandma seems a little, <laughs> little too eager to go to the blood place. Um, but this is something to. This will be a challenge. It'll be good. To, we'll we'll uh, come on. And I'll 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 be like to the to the oak oh, like this is this will be it. Come on. So chop. You have not seen Yanye be so you know spry in a long time. <laughs> it's like, I know, right? It's like. There is death yes! in the air. Oh boy! <laughs> uh, yes! Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, we, will, we will hike. Uh, we will hike towards. I. I will. I mean, I will lead. I guess mm-hmm. if. Well, I'm following. We're gonna do one more travel roll to get there, and um, mm-hmm. we, we they can keep the same positions. These people, like the people who have the best stats, I'd say stay in that. But I'm gonna give whoever is leading the way. And I'll give both of them actually a bonus. You're up there and you're communicating with them and you're smelling because you used your kin talent. You're smelling. You've got this locked on. So they're both going to get a bonus of plus one to their rolls uh, for the next the next section of travel. So when you travel, typically it based, it's based off the type of terrain you move two hexes for it. So that's why I moved you guys two mm-hmm. hexes up. So we'll do another roll to move two more. After you've moved twice in a day, you typically need to stop and rest. Otherwise, you can push forward for one more quarter day, uh, but you do take damage for doing so. So we'll push forward a little bit more. Look at that. Keep watch scouting. Karu is good. You're up there. Great mm-hmm. gray cat is fun illusion again. Gray cat's kind of playing in the snow as you're going along also. <laughs> Yanye, oh, you're enough. just like you're eager like ah, fresh let's blood. Let's go. Come on. Yes. This let's is what we came up. for. And in front of you, I'll just put you. You see the tower. The tower is big black tower reaching up into the clouds up into the heavens in front of you ah we are at the tower of the four seers oh we're almost at the end of our time here oh look at that i honestly just looked at the time and i know ben has to go to another channel so we are at the foot of the tower of the far seers it's actually a really great place to leave off the nice little cliffhanger to see what this blood is What's going on here? And if they can get the uh, the the gem, the rumored star emitting gem that's inside of the Tower of the Farseers. So I want to thank everybody, everyone who joined us today. Thank you so much for joining and watching the session. Um, thank you to all these wonderful players. It has been so much fun playing with you. This is a great group so far, and I had a lot of fun in this first session. Thank you. Thanks yeah, for good. having me. That's a win, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Let's go okay. around. We'll do one more round. Everybody, please plug what you've got going on. I'm going to drop links in the chat for everybody who's here also where they can find you. So, Myri, where can we find you? Orkenspalter.tv, uh, both on YouTube and on Twitch and basically everywhere. And uh, sorry, it's mostly in German. <laughs> <laughs> Michael? Uh, hey, guys. My name is Michael. I'm the Dead Aussie Gamer. I am uh, a role player who plays in a bunch of different channels. So pretty much just type Dead Aussie Gamer. You'll find me. Uh, I do have my own Twitch channel. I have my own YouTube channel. YouTube's for um, 
advice videos and stuff like that. Twitch is for live plays and live streams. Um, I do stuff all the time, and I have a really cool Discord channel that you can come and find at discord.me slash gamer. Come chat with me. Hang out. We'll chill. <laughs> and Millie? Um, my name is Millie. I'm Millie the GM. You could find me anywhere that you type in Millie the GM as one word. That's me. Um, next thing you're going to see my face on uh, Sunday evening, 8.30 GMT. We're playing Descent into Avernus. Um, and we've, we're still in the Dungeon of the Dead 3, but we might actually find the bad guy this week. We <laughs> might find the bad guy this week. Might. I don't know. <laughs> we went down the Yawning Portal and just found knickknacks for a pub. We, we don't play the D&D game like we should play the D&D game. <laughs> we, we, we're, we're making our own story here. It's good. <laughs> That's the way to do it. Ben? Where can we find you uh, actually like right after this? I'm Ben and you can find me in about 47 seconds on Garblag Games. And hey, if you guys want to stage a raid, that would be fabulous. Um, thanks for having me. Great to be here. Come and check us out on Garblag Games. We're doing one shots all of December. And then we've got a whole new lineup set up for January, some of which is still a little hush hush because we haven't been allowed to announce it yet because we have a special sponsor. That's right. Yeah, we're going to go over there. You guys are doing some free league games right after this. You know, Twilight 2000. So we'll send all these lovely folks over there. And Matt, where can we find you? I'm a host on the Mud and Blood podcast, which runs every week. Um, I'm also the host of Three Skulls Tavern, which is a YouTube channel that does free league actual plays mainly. Um, threeskulls.tv uh, will take you to that. And on Sunday, I'm very excited. I'm going to be having a solo gaming roundtable with some really big people in the solo gaming um, scene, including um, Tana Pigeon, who's written the Mythic GM emulator, um, Chris Bissett, who's uh, from Loot the Room, who's written The Wretched, and a bunch of other stuff, um, Jammy the Sword Queen, who used to be a tarot reader, now does a bunch of story games, uh, John Lopez, and Peter Rudenberg Burgess. So very excited to have some really big names in the solo gaming scene on to talk about solo gaming. So anyway. Very good. Thank you, everybody, for uh, joining us. Um, to find out when the next game's happening, follow me on Twitter at Jowzam, J-O-W-Z-A-M, and the number three. I'll be announcing on there. We're going to need to figure out when we're getting together next to do the next session of this. But thank you again, all the players, everybody who joined us. We're going to shift you on over to Garbly Games, where they're going to be doing Twilight 2000. Have a great time. I'm uh, also going... Chris Sorry? I'm going to snack one of the mats and <laughs> Michael for another Forbidden Lands stream. We are going to run by, basically to peril. That's what's going to start in January if everything just, goes well. So that's that's just, the last thing. Sorry. Just announced. There you go. That's what I was hinting at earlier. But I didn't want to right, steal right uh, now? Myrie's thunder. So there you go. It's just been announced. Michael and I will right. be playing in Myrie's uh, uh, Forbidden Lands game as well. Yeah, And I will be playing uh, my own character's long lost sibling in that game. Who is also looking for my long lost sibling, um, <laughs> and he's much and he's much nicer than than Frost is. Frost is uh, Frost is a bit cold. Ah, ah but <laughs> all right, all right, everybody, have a great day, great holidays, and we'll see you Cheers. in the new year with the return of Forbidden Lands. <laughs>